We're gonna start with uh, going to the hobby shop and get ourselves some brass tubing, the ones they used to build airplanes. And a stainless steel bar rod, quarter, uh, 14 gauge, and then I cut half inch pieces of the tubing, a square and round, two different sizes, and put them together like this to make my own jigs. Different sizes, flats, rounds. I put them together so that way I can use just one. And uh, the 14 gauge uh, stainless steel wire, you start with a hoop. You use those round ends pliers. I got these at the Swami man and the yard sales. You know, you don't need to get nothing fancy. Everything may work, you know. You have to improvise. Once you have the loop done, and then you proceed to get the grommet into it. Most of the time, uh, stainless steel and grommet is ready to go. Now, gauge, little improvising tools. You can buy this and made and my pliers and a paint brush to use uh, the acid and soldering iron. Needles comes in bulk like that. This is for magnums. Put a needle together in a little bar and that's used me to separate the needles. This is one of the jigs that I already made now. Made out of Teflon. They never exist, man, 20 years ago. And this is a gauge, man. This is what I use, the number 13, to tie the needles with. I think it's one of the best tools you can ever use to put groups together to get your lines tighter besides the jigs to put the groups together and a loop to check for hooks and uh, needle damage and this is my pride and joy man 16 needle bars jig improvised made out of wood and screws a stay clean is the best acid I ever used to put needles together you can be, be careful with this this is highly toxic be careful with your eyes, mouth, and fingers, man. Before you're using the needle bars, sterilize them. You don't want to get no crap on your hands, man. Cross-contaminate yourself. Now we proceed to get all the needle bars in it. Most jigs comes with one or two needle bars, to, and I make these 16, so I can make a big bunch of them without taking them on and off. You see? What experience give you, man, you just have to improvise yourself. And I haven't patented this, man, one of these days. Uh, lead free, man. No lead on the soldering, silver soldering wire, man. Be careful, because that's highly poisonous. You don't want any kind of a leftovers wearing off lead into the ink and poison people. Anyway, groups, man. You can do threes, five, sevens, whatever your preference is. I use in this time seven, make sure the tips are all aligned on the bottom, resting the needles on the bottom so they will be even. Proceed with the acid and the soldering iron on the top first. Once you get that, and then this is the most careful part, the most important part that you gotta be careful with, not to hook the needles. Then you put pressure a little bit and it will tie the tips together and you can use the acid again, you see? leaving a gap of at least one eight on the tips so that way the ink will flow freely between the needles and be careful with your fingers man this thing gets really hot and you can burn with experience you can do it faster you see that's a round seven now we proceed to do a flat nine I don't know I have preferences for nines uh, seems to me that they work better for me I mean you can do up to 60 you know I know people they use lots hundreds of them sometimes but uh, so far this is what has been working for me again the acid the soldering you see you get the tips first on the upper part of the needles when the tips are even on the bottom so that way you get a flat nine make sure you don't leave any bumps of soldering because the needle won't be able to rest on the pipe and the tubing but fine and you will see we'll have problems with them so now to, to make magnum aluminum foils to keep the separation of the needles and my improvisation tool a needle soldering in a uh, needle bar so you zigzag between the needles once you get them all zigzag and you leave five on the bottom and four on the top and that's how it's going to work now you get the aluminum foil separator in between them and you slide this off so that way you have your space. Sometimes folding the aluminum foil in different uh, times, you can get different thicknesses that give you spaces. All depends on preferences. 
sometimes you use a clip to hold them and tie them a little more you know but uh, I like to use them like this fold in the aluminum foil three times and then proceed the soldering always leave at least one aid non soldering in the tip so you can get the needle f the open for the ink to flow you see that's a magnum nine you can make bigger as many as you want sometimes you know you need to get it like a little closer you can always squeeze them a little bit they spread and tie the needles and my G with the nine uh, and the seven liner we're gonna proceed to solder them in there like I said you can this time I'm gonna do just two and because I, I have already a, a precise uh, mark so I make them all the same length sometimes needles are different sizes because of the frames of the machines but I have pretty much even sizes machines so that's what I do you see make sure the soldering go around the bar because they get loose and they break easy the needles will come off from the bar and you don't want this happens right when you do tattoos you know what I mean okay so now when you finish with them you just have to make sure because it's impossible to keep them all straight so now you have to kind of line them up you see and sometimes you use the pliers just to straighten them up get them all straight like a narrow and always get your eye loop and check for hooks man you don't want to use no damaged needles you have to always keep carefully not to damage your needles when you wash them or when you work on them make sure you can remove all the acid and they won't rust now I had 20 years in this box and I always keep all my stuff in it and the acid I always keep it separated because uh, it's so highly corrosive they will rust anything to get in touch with it